Hi guys, my name's Yaz and welcome to this AMR video where I run through all things AMR. As you know, we're all about making things simple here at Bot Hive. So sit back, pour yourself a cup of tea and a biscuit if you're me, and let me run you through my guide of all things autonomous mobile robots. So let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. What actually is an AMR? As I mentioned, AMR stands for Autonomous Mobile Robot. They're amazing feats of technology which combine really cool hardware designs with really sophisticated software. For example, some really clever vision scanning and human detection. AMRs can come in lots of different forms, mostly wheel formats, but strictly speaking, an AMR can be any autonomous robot with wheels, tracks for outdoor environments, or legs for jumping and clearing stairs, just like the awesome spot from Boston Dynamics. Some AMRs are flat surfaced, so for carrying things like boxes or pallets. Other AMRs have combined extra features like pulling connectors for wheeling racks around, connected cobot arms, or even inbuilt structures for handling items or dispensing things. So who are AMRs for? If you work in a warehouse or head up a warehouse team and you find yourself and your team constantly carting things around large areas, an AMR could be for you. I've put a list up on the screen of areas and industries where AMRs can be used. But really, if you work in any kind of industry with large areas, then an AMR is the technology for you. Let's talk about why AMRs are great and what the benefits of working with an AMR can be. Generally, AMRs are an amazing way to apply robotics into your business. It's pretty obvious what they can do and how they can help you. They move things from A to B and potentially to C or then back to A, depending on your current setup. It's really a question of how much time and resource you spend moving items from one area of your facility to another. And just think, if that could be automated, what could you use those additional resources for? Let's face it, we all struggle with the killer problem of just not having enough hours in the day to really complete the tasks that we want, or building the things that we want to develop. So how do you get started with preparing to invest in an AMR? The first thing that I would recommend you doing if you haven't done so already is to give each member of your floor team a stepometer or you can download it on an app on your phone. This data will be really valuable when you build out the case for how much time and effort you spend potentially wasting by carting things around your working environment. Once you've done this, you can convert this into a total time sum and the team at BotHive can start mapping out what an automated version of this might look like. Don't worry if this sounds fiddly or complicated. We are here to provide more details and give you support on this. You can get in contact with us with our live chat button or on the contact form at the bottom of each page on the BotHive website. Let's take a look into the top three things you need to consider before applying AMRs into your organisation. Number one. Let's start with a simple one. What kind of ground surface do you have? I know it might sound really basic, but AMRs need a flat and even surface to be able to operate successfully. Any kind of gradients can affect the payload capability, the battery life, and even general operating performance of the robot. It's an important consideration, especially if you're working in an older facility, or whether you have things in your working environment like ramps or slopes. There are ways and means around this, but gradients and uneven surfaces will limit the number of supplies available to you. In some cases, you may just end up deciding to go for a mobile robot with tracks or legs. In other cases, you may decide that whilst transporting items around a workplace is taking up a lot of resource, there may be a more quick win opportunity to be had by stacking shelves or boxing. Number two, AMRs are great for transporting goods around a working environment, but with different modifications or even by choosing different suppliers, you can achieve more than just transporting goods, like scanning and surveying, material handling, even loading and unloading. So have a think about what the actual working station pre and post delivery entails. This will help determine what else the AMR may be required to do. Number three. Lastly, and most importantly, how you operate and manage the AMR is absolutely critical. Different suppliers have designed different ways of managing the workflows. 
For example, some suppliers have designed specific software that is operator-led. Say for example, you have a team of operating staff that have to replenish materials every 30 minutes. So they're going from their workstation to the materials room, they're picking up the casing, the bubble wrap, the packaging, and they're going back and forth and back and forth every half an hour throughout the day. There are some AMRs that operate from software, which means that that particular member of the packaging team can send the robot to go and pick up the materials and the bubble wrap and the casing on their behalf. This means that production doesn't have to stop every half an hour for that worker to keep going back and forth to the packaging room. Alternatively, there are other AMR systems which are managed in a much more centralised way, where individual operators don't get involved with calling for the robots, but a member of the management team does. Typically a business analyst who manages the location and the task fulfilment of the robot from one central cloud system. The thing to remember here is that there are different ways of working to suit different customer needs, and that's what it's really all about. So really have a think about whether you want to manage the goods to person delivery in an autonomous operator manner, or a more distant, centralized, cloud-based manner. Again, if you'd like some support on how to figure this out, then please do give us a shout. Sometimes it just helps to talk things through. A problem halved is a problem shared, as they say. So we've talked about AMRs, but what's the difference between an AMR and an AGB? Don't worry if you've made the mistake of confusing an AMR with an AGB, we've all done it, I've done it. For the record, AGV stands for Autonomous Guided Vehicle. To all of us in the everyday world, they do look quite similar to an AMR in the look and the feel, and they certainly do carry out similar tasks. However, there are some very important differences between the two, particularly in the way that they're deployed. For instance, AMRs tend to be more flexible and they can be more autonomous when manoeuvring around objects. They are jam-packed full of LiDAR sensors and additional computing power, which makes them very good at detecting objects when moving around and deciphering how to interact with those objects. To give you a quick example of this, say a robot is moving along a corridor and spots a human worker heading towards it. An AMR has the capability to detect the worker establish the human worker is carrying something and is actually cognitively trained to make a conscious decision to get out the way. So really, AMRs are designed to put the human at the centre of work at all times. AGVs, on the other hand, tend to follow predetermined tracks or markers on the floor. Rather than being equipped to make their own decisions about changing course or avoid collision, this isn't necessarily a bad thing as there is a time and a place for an AGV in the workplace, but if you're looking for a robot with more dynamic reactions, then it's an AMR you're looking for. So in summary, if you're thinking about bringing AMRs into the workplace, just really have a think about how human dense the environment is and, and how you want this to evolve in time. This will help you determine whether you want an AMR or an AGV. So the question you've all probably been waiting for. As with all robotics, I have to prefix everything I say with, it depends. When investing in robotics and automation, there's sadly and inevitably a lot of variables which come into play. This can alter the overall investment that you make. So please don't go away thinking, oh, Yaz told me it was gonna be this much because it might turn out a tiny little bit differently. However, I know we all need a rough idea or a ballpark figure, so let's take a look. As a starting price point, you're looking at an entry price of around 27,000 pounds or 27,000 euros. Or for our friends over the pond, this is approximately $35,000. And this would be specifically for a low payload AMR. Obviously, the higher payload capacity, the higher the price. So expect prices to climb up to around 60 or 70,000 pounds and euros per robot for a maximum payload AMR. So hopefully not as steep as you might have first expected. But guys, remember, this is just for one unit. Depending how ambitious you want to be and the commercial and productivity benefits you want to get out of this, you may need to think about investing in multiple units. That way, you can always have some robots on the move and some recharging. It's also probably worth mentioning that AMRs tend to be slightly more expensive than AGVs, so that's just something to bear in mind as well. Albeit the cost of investing in AGVs doesn't just come with the cost of the robot unit itself, you'll most definitely need to invest in additional accessories like floor markers, beacons, and scanning infrastructures. I know it's a lot to think about. I'm sure you can all agree that this has been great food for thought. Have a think about what option is best for the direction that you want to head in. And of course, we at BotHive are here to help you with that. 
Either head to our robot matchmaker tool or drop your details to us in either our live chat or the contact forms at the bottom of our BotHive website. From there, we'll schedule a free assessment call between yourself and one of our experts. If you'd like to keep an eye out for more of our robot product guides, you can subscribe to us or sign up for our newsletter on bothive.com. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. I've been Yaz Hagigat. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.